A video by the artist Tolur L.N. plays on a loop in a gallery at Grounds for Sculpture. Workers beat dust from a centuries-old carpet made by prison inmates for a king. Now, the rug is owned by a museum in the western Indian state of Gujarat. The museum staff, they were cleaning this carpet, which was newly acquired. So I was just very surprised the amount of uh, dust which comes out of this carpet was unimaginable. You know, the king walked on that, all the jail inmates walked on that, the contemporary officers walked on that. You know, there's so much dust and so much uh, history this uh, carpet has accumulated. So basically I was, uh, you know, documenting the history, you know, the historical dust. You have art everywhere, even in the dust particle also. Talur is from India, but lives part of the time in South Korea and travels widely. As an artist, he sees the traditional symbols of India from an international perspective, where they merge and combine with symbols from other cultures as well. Talur's work operates on a number of levels. So the piece next to us here is chromatophobia. The meaning of the word is a fear of money. And so Talur, in his uh, sort of witty uh, sense of humor, has created a solution for that, a therapeutic tool. Uh, if you have fear of money, you can hammer it in and give it to him. At the same time, the weight of those coins are kind of bearing down on uh, the large figure, which is uh, the laughing Buddha, a monk-like figure uh, who was known for being jovial and for his uh, sense of abundance. And that symbol has migrated from a symbol of abundance within a spiritual sense. And it's migrated to be the symbol that's often associated with merchants next to the cash register, a sign for, for good fortune. And so I think Talur is interested in the ways in which a spiritual and ritual kind of symbols can migrate and how they can be sometimes co-opted by commerce. By using mass-produced artworks as elements in his own art, Talur makes us reconsider their meaning. Shiva is dancing for the destruction and then the rebirth or creation of, of existence of the world. And what Talur has done is, uh, in place of the traditional Shiva figure, has replaced it with a globe of charred wood, wood that was taken from funeral pyres in, in India. Through the material, he's found a very contemporary way of telling the same story. Talur's work is displayed in two large exhibition halls at Grounds for Sculpture. In one, visitors can climb a scaffold newly designed by the artist. It's like exhibition inside exhibition. Scaffolding also allows you to kind of view the work in a different angles. You can climb up to the deck and then view the same work in different uh, views. It's also a process. Scaffolding always gives you a feeling that it's ongoing, it's, it's not finished. People wonder, is it, is it done? And on the opening day, they're not even finished. Um, but I think even when you look on the scaffold, there's quite a number of works on the scaffold that include the language of construction. Talur's work is layered, full of references, and meant to be experienced in person. Many are interactive. You can grind away at reproductions of the Statue of Liberty, or test yourself in Panic Room. Talur's newest is also one of his biggest works. It's 18 feet high. Then I used this uh, piece um, uh, which scanned from the Philadelphia Museum. The skeletal figures were inspired by rare Indian temple fragments from the collection of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Talur says that making art can be like having conversations with artists from long ago. I can have a conversation with the, with the 10th century sculptor 
uh, with the 21st century sculptor. Uh, what you are doing is you are adding more and understanding it more.